In my opinion, the main goal of uh, Russian information war is to make sure that Ukraine stops its European and Euro-Atlantic integration and basically stops moving to the West, remains neutral or even come back to the Russian political orbit. So uh, I would say that in Russia's information war there are two tracks. One track is aimed at the West and the second one is aimed at Ukraine. So. Uh, narratives, Russian narratives which target Western countries, Western media, uh, Western citizens try to uh, defame Ukraine and portray Ukraine as a country which is not worth support and worth attention. So basically, if we take a narrative about U Ukrainians allegedly being Nazi Nazis who uh, wage war against Russian-speaking people in Donbas, the goal here is clear to say that Ukrainians have nothing to do with democracy, that this is not a democratic state and therefore all support, uh, financial uh, and uh, otherwise support is not worth it. So on its track in Ukraine, uh, Russia tries to undermine trust of Ukrainians towards the EU, NATO and Ukraine and other Ukraine's Western ally. So to stop this internal drive for, uh, for moving towards the West. Uh, in this regard, anti-Western narratives play a huge role. So basically Russia is not trying to portray itself as good, uh, as an ally, as country which uh, Ukraine should orient towards. Uh, on the other hand, uh, Russia tries to depict the West, uh, which is allegedly just as bad as Russia or is even worse. So it tries to say that uh, Western countries only aim to use Ukraine as uh, a raw, ba raw materials base, uh, that the West uh, aims to rob Ukrainians of their lands, of their natural resources and so on. And uh, it, uh, Russian propaganda tries to depict any relations, Ukraine-West relations or Ukraine-Russia relations to that extent as zero-sum game in which only one side can win and other side would lose. I would say that it is not as effective as Kremlin would have hoped since uh, seven years after Russian aggression against Ukraine began, Ukrainians still want to go west. So uh, according to various polls, uh, public support for EU and NATO membership has been increasing for all these years and Ukraine still moves towards the west, it implements reforms, it tries to change itself, fight against corruption, become even more democratic. So I would say that this major goal of the Kremlin was not achieved and that's good for us Ukrainians. However, some uh, particular narratives are really successful. Last year we at Internews Ukraine did a study of conspiratorial propaganda in Ukraine together with London School of Economics and other partners and uh, we determined that uh, a narrative about alleged Western curators who curate the Ukrainian government and the Romanians of Soros who also could control uh, political and social processes in Ukraine. So 40% of respondents said they believed in this narrative. This is quite a lot and this kind of conspiratorial thinking is sadly uh, sadly has roots in Ukraine and it can be um, observed both in East of Ukraine and in West as well. So to this end, Russian propaganda was quite successful indeed. In short term perspective, I strongly believe that uh, Ukrainian civil society, Ukrainian government 
how to uh, uncover Russian disinformation campaigns, uh, explain them, uh, try to explain their goal and also explain the disinformation behavior. Not only which narratives are being spread, but also by whom, where and why. So, in a medium-term perspective, I believe that there should be uh, a strong coordination between uh, various government institutions and civil society. So, right now, uh, definitely there are efforts to build such coordination, which are mainly implemented. So, uh, by creation of Center of uh, Strategic communication and uh, security policy by the Ministry of Culture and Information Policy of Ukraine. And this center right now does a lot to coordinate a lot of government institutions and civil society agencies to make these joint efforts more effective. And in long-term perspective, I firmly believe that Ukrainian government and Ukrainian civil society alike should work on building up uh, media literacy in Ukraine because Right now, it is really not as strong as we would want and uh, as it would be necessary for effectively countering Russian disinformation. I believe that the newly established uh, project, uh, which is called Filter, uh, aimed at developing media literacy in Ukraine, especially in Ukrainian regions, uh, is a very good example of that because it is implemented by the Ministry of Culture. Uh, however, many civil society organizations, including Internews Ukraine, are, uh, have also joined to support this initiative, to lend uh, their uh, expertise and uh, some of the resources to help implement the project activities. Therefore, I believe that such joint projects between the government and civil society institutions are the key uh, and uh, the way to move forward. Well, media are also definitely very important in this. They play a huge role, but right now media are only, in my opinion, are only beginning to understand how huge their role is. Um, some media, for instance, LigaNet, are also right now doing projects to increase media literacy, training for regional journalists, and so on. And that is really important because they also, during these trainings, they uh, try to explain the experience their own journalists had. And this exchange of experience is very important here. Now we see many problems, especially with online media, since Ukraine's legislation regarding to online media is a bit outdated and online media do not even have to register as media to to go online and to share news. Therefore, we in Ukraine have a lot of so-called junk news websites whose owner is not, uh, can't be easily identified or can't be identified at all. And these media do not adhere to any journalistic guidelines or rules and they simply publish clickbait news to get clicks because that's how they get money. So this is a huge problem which is also which also has to be sorted out by the government and I know that the draft of new media law uh, tackles this problem.